All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to light a dark room. These are always really challenging with wood walls, uh, wood floors. You get a lot of color cast. A lot of times, you're not able to bounce that flash off the ceiling. In this case, I actually was, but for this particular example, I made sure to use my wing-like parabolic umbrella, which looks like this. Now, I am going to give my review on this at the end of this video and give, give you my recommendations whether you should use this or not and some of the alternatives that might be even easier to use that a lot of other people are using in the industry. So, let me get you into Lightroom right now. I'm going to show you how I edited this image to make it super simple. Alright, so here we are in Lightroom and here is the ambient layer. Now, right off the bat, it's like, wow, that's actually pretty nice. We don't have a whole lot of blown out... Uh, the window isn't blown out there's not a harsh glare on the floor even though we will be able to improve that with the flash layer and no I did not run with my circular polarizer on this particular shoot and here's why because with that layer was 7.5 millimeter it already vignettes enough on its own and I haven't figured out the sweet spot in that lens I don't know if it's an aperture issue whereas if I maybe to go to f5.6 if that would clear it up I still have to do more tests on that so stay tuned that is my only negative with that lens is that vignettes if you can see this right here in the corner it just it's it goes every corner is dark and when you get outside and shoot like especially in white snow you can definitely tell that it vignettes a lot but it's a nice, clean, sharp, small lens, and it goes down to f2, so that's why I use it. Not that I shoot f2 with uh, photos, I just use it for video, but anyway, let's keep moving. So here is, like I said, the ambient layer. I already did my final bumps on, or my initial bumps on all these. This is the flash pop into the room. We're going to use that one. And now you can see that I'm shooting with that parabolic uh, umbrella with that AD600. And I like this because the way it throws light and the reason why these were even created and a lot of people use these is for if you're in a in a room with low ceilings you have a lower profile with that the wing like the way it's shaped as opposed to a big round umbrella and this thing just throws light everywhere so these are really good for doing group photo large group photos where you need to throw that light and Although, when you're shooting into an umbrella and then kicking that, having that light kick back out, you lose a lot of power as opposed to just facing the umbrella towards the subject and firing it. So, there's always a give and take with everything, really. Alright, let's move on to this shot. This is the other side, and again, see I was tucked down, and I'm using my mobile app to control the camera. That just allows me to have one less thing that I have to worry about as far as a trigger in my hand and another, tr you know, or the trigger of receiver, whatever, on the camera. And plus, I can see what I'm looking at. I can I can take a flash pop when I'm in, off camera and review it without having to keep running back and forth to the camera. That's why I love using that. So if you're not using any sort of app or device like a cam ranger or something i highly suggest that i mean the apps are free most times if whatever camera you're shooting on has an app that you can just download from the app store give it a shot it's super convenient that way you're not messing with your camera settings too much and moving those images you know even though you can use auto align in photoshop it just i'm telling you i never thought using the app would be so beneficial but i don't think i could go back to not being able to see my camera settings when I'm away from the camera. I just, I love that ability to do that. So, just throwing that out there. All right. So, those are the images that we're going to bring in. We got to do our two composites here. So, let's highlight those our flash above the camera and our ambient layer. Right click, edit, and open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, all my layers have been loaded into Photoshop. I am going to click the top one selected. I'm going to hold down shift, click the bottom one that selects them all. We're going to come up here to edit, auto align, and then hit OK. All right, there we go. We have a little bit of alignment that was needed, so it's a good thing I did that. Let's just click anywhere and unclick those. So whenever you're doing composites, again, ambient layer on top, initial flash pop underneath that, and then any composites you know if you had to light separate rooms those are underneath so let's toggle off the ambient layer we don't need it let's toggle off the main flash shot we don't need that right now 
Now we're going to work on these two, blending them together. So we're going to click on the top one, click on this layer mask right here, command I to invert. I love the gradient tool. This is a trick I show in all my tutorials. And just click anywhere in front and drag it over to the other side. And then we go, we did a nice mask. Now you can see that we got a the umbrella reflection from the other flash pop is in that shot so what we need to do is just blend that back out by switching over to black taking our brush tool I'm doing left bracket to make my brush smaller and we're just gonna paint back out that window and that's the other thing to watch for when you're doing these composites is at least give yourself one within any of the images give yourself one clean window view without any reflections now we can turn that layer back on that was above the camera let's turn that to lighten mode and see what that does for us all right we're gonna have to use yeah just lit up that corner right there so basically our two composites lit up this section and then our flash above the camera lit up this and of course we have to minimize that glare but luckily our ambient layer see we have glare still coming in we want to know where the natural light is coming from and what it's doing to the image so we don't overly process it and make it look unnatural so let's take our ambient layer and a lot of times what you can do is just bring that opacity to 50 percent and that does that settles it pulls enough of that flash out of there to make it look natural with still giving us a clean image all right so we got to clean that window up what we're going to do is we're going to take our layer mask don't invert it this time make sure black selected brush tool and we're just going to paint back over that window view all we're doing is bringing back in that flash layer behind that ambient layer to give us that window view now this was a snowy overcast day that's probably why we didn't have a whole lot of harsh sun coming in that would have caused a lot more color casts and we also can feather in that glare off the floor just a little bit so if you're not using a circular polarizer filter right now make sure you're putting enough flash power to it that you are able to correct for that harsh glare but it, like I say it's always good to have a circular polarizer because a lot of times you're gonna want to blend more ambient back in on a floor surface and you're gonna be able to do that when you have a circular polarizer because you'll be able to eliminate the glare from that and we can feather out this too a little bit but remember that was where the glare was from the flash layer so we don't want to do that too much and there we go let's flatten this image by right clicking coming down here to flatten image and here's another trick I like to do just to eliminate some of the color cast that maybe you're not able to notice that. We're going to Command J to duplicate this. Come up here to Filter, Blur, and then Average. That's going to smear all the colors together, give you an average color. We need to get this back to middle gray, so we're going to use... Um, we're going to use a curves adjustment layer and use the middle eyedropper. So if we hover over that, that's going to be, it says you're going to sample an image to set gray point. That's what we want to do. Just click anywhere in the image. And if you notice, look at this. It pulled out the reds. It pulled out some of the greens. It lifted the blues a little bit. So if we toggle off this first layer, now it will do a drastic change. And sometimes that is too much. So what we're going to do is just take the opacity of this and drop that to about... Oh, I don't know you're gonna have to play with that 50% a lot of times works for me let's toggle that off yeah see it definitely fixed that but I'm gonna bring it down even more and again that layer will end you can see the vignetting issue that we're having here in the corner but we'll fix that here too so let's flatten this image hit OK and now we're gonna command S to save it we're gonna bring this back into Lightroom alright let's do our interior final bump on this one and watch we are going to be able to come down here to our hue saturation and luminance sliders make sure saturation is selected and this little circle right here click on that we're gonna be able to bring this up here and if you just click anywhere in the image and pull down you have to hold that look at it, it's pulling the blues and aquas out and we let off now if we toggle that on and off look at that how it pulled a lot of the blue out of the out of the ceiling that sometimes it's hard to tell whether or not you have color casts uh, the other thing we could do is test it over on this side well it's still pulling out aqua but that's okay we got it we fixed it clean that up really nicely now the other thing I did notice was that we have something here on the floor normally I would have done this in Photoshop would have been easier but Lightroom now has the ability to do like cloning 
let's make that a little bigger so we can select the whole thing and now and if it doesn't do it in a good enough spot you can actually hover over this and click and hold down and drag this basically the same concept as the cl uh, clone tool in Photoshop and let off and then just click on that to get rid of it and there you go there's the final image so here is my review on that parabolic umbrella let me go back and show you how it looks this was the smaller version I believe this is like a 35 mm or 35 inch or whatever I don't remember 38 inch maybe they make them 42 80 they make them huge I don't recommend it it was really a pain to be lugging this around the house especially with that 8600 so this is what I'm gonna start doing I'm gonna start using a reflector and I know a lot of people do right here just a standard reflector that I'm gonna be able to hold up Take my 8600 and just do a flash pop and then move to the other room. So I'm going to have my cell phone around my neck like I show in other tutorials how I run now is with that 8600 with a strap around my neck and my phone in a case with a strap. And I'm going to just set my camera timer to like a two second timer, hit the trigger, hold this up, do my flash pop, move to the other side. That way you're not running around with a separate light stand on on is you know along with your tripod the quicker and the more mobile you can be to move around a house the better your life is gonna be the easier and the faster you're gonna be able to move through um, a listing shoot so again leave me a comment below if you uh, have any questions about any of this stuff and leave me a comment also let me know what you use what do you how do you battle dark rooms wood interiors I'd love to hear it we all learn from each other in the comment section so hit that subscribe button tutorials are coming out all the time thanks for watching guys bye bye